Today we're going to talk a little bit about welding batteries and how to put a pack together using the Sunstone battery welding system. Uh, the first thing we do is we want to set the system up correctly. So that's uh, key because when you do have the system set up correctly, it will give you not only consistent welds, but something that you can guarantee uh, when you send it out in the world so that you have a, a pack that's, um, that you know you can stand behind. Uh, and this system was per perfectly designed to do that. So what we have is a capacitive discharge welding power supply. It's a dual pulse system that allows you to, uh, again, create more consistency when the welds happen. The first thing you'll do is set the machine up, which is uh, the weld head connected to the power supply. And then you need to calibrate it so that you're ready to weld. And that's what we're going to focus on today. The first thing we'll do is uh, turn the power on and then we turn the pulses off so that the welder has power to it, but yet it's not going to weld as we calibrate the weld head in the setup. So what we'll do from here is move over to the weld head with the foot pedal. Um, we've got air connected to the weld head so that it will travel up and down when we touch the foot pedal. What we want to do is calibrate it so that when you tap the foot pedal, it's a one action that creates the entire weld for you and all you need to do is line the parts up with the battery tap, with the nickel tap on top of them, tap the foot pedal and the weld happens for you and then you just move on to the next one. So that's the easiest way to do it and that's how we want to help you get set up. Okay, so again, what we, do, what we did with the quick release is to line the electrodes up over the battery and you want to be approximately an eighth of an inch to maybe a quarter of an inch above where the weld will take place or above the battery that you're going to be welding on. And, and then again, you tighten that knob back down. Now we want to adjust the amount of travel that the electrodes will have before the weld is made. So as you can see, when you step on the, on the foot pedal, the welder will travel down and make contact with the battery. At that point, you want that weld signal to be sent to the welder so that it makes uh, it, it triggers the weld to happen in one easy motion. So you just have to line up the battery, uh, tap the foot pedal, make the weld, and then move on to the next area. Now how we adjust that travel is with using this stop nut uh, adjustment. This is a more fine adjustment than the quick release. So first thing you do is adjust the quick release to get that space of about an eighth to a quarter of an inch. And then you'll adjust the stop nut for the fine travel to get your this helps to uh, make more precise the amount of travel that the head has so that you get more consistent results every time your electro electrodes travel the same amount and they apply the same amount of, of pressure to your uh, battery. So what we'll do is, the first thing we'll do is take this small locking uh, nut and we'll take it up so that it's not in our way, right? We don't want that to uh, stop the amount of travel yet. And then we'll tap on the foot pedal and we'll see that this light's coming on already. So when this light, this LED light lights up, we know that the weld signal is being sent uh, through the trigger cable so that the weld energy actually comes through the electrodes and makes the weld happen. So we want that light to turn on, but we don't, we don't want it to go farther beyond the point where the light needs to turn on. So again, we know that it's turning on here, so we can turn it down a little bit, this, this adjustment knob here, to shorten the amount of travel. See how it's not turning on now? I've taken it down too far, so I'll turn it back up a little bit. Now I've reached that point to where it's barely turning on. Now I can lock this the travel in place by tightening this smaller nut back down. Now that's locked into place so I have the same amount of travel. At that point, you'll adjust the pressure on each of these two micrometer knobs. I usually start at around eight or nine on each knob, and then I uh, see how the weld does from there to adjust how much pressure you need. Pressure is your probably second most important thing next to the amount of energy that you apply. In resistive welding like this, um, if you have too much pressure, you can suffocate the weld area. So it creates a, a bond that isn't strong enough. Uh, if you have too light of pressure, then, then uh, as many of you have probably seen, you have sparking and arcing and inconsistencies. So we want enough pressure to be consistent and reliable welds, but yet not too much to where it suffocates the weld. And again, that will be a trial and error process that you, that you go through. 